Ace. There needs to be a major overhaul in the National Marine Fisheries Service. There needs to be some kind of accountability and oversight, and the fishermen should be, or, or real fishermen, should be on those boats, running those boats, showing them what's going on. I'm to a point in the last few years, because of the makeup of the council, the people that the agency is populating this council's with to stack in the deck. They don't want those of us that have to go out and live with the regulations. There's nothing harder than sitting at a table like today till 8.15 at night from 8 o'clock in the morning making regulations and then have to go fishing tomorrow and live with those. Yeah. Nobody, can, nobody knows better what works and what doesn't work than us, yet they're the ones they're trying to remove from the process. Right. And that, that is wrong. You lose the expertise of the professional fishermen in fisheries management, you have nothing. You have nothing. We need to do a better job of educating people that are going into fishery management. And that doesn't mean uh, this thing where you have to hold a fish in your hand to understand it. It involves operations research, a uh, whole variety of, of, of management techniques that aren't uh, used. We have 400 labs going out here every day. They're called fishing vessels. We have to be regulated at some, at some reasonable levels. No question. There's bad players in any group. Any group, anywhere, any industry that you find is a few bad players, but there's plenty of damn good people involved in our industry that take a lot of pride and heritage in the heritage that we've created. There's a disconnect between the industry and the regulators that just doesn't ever be able to seem to get breached and there's this terrible adversarial condition that the in industry has tried to, to bridge. When we started, fishermen were involved in the managing process, but not today. There's no doubt that the animosity that, that has grown between fishermen and regulators, and, and vice versa, we're at an impasse. It's definitely there. There's, there's a lot of uh, ill will and odd feelings. We've tried to cooperate. We've tried to do uh, uh, collaborative research projects. And it seems like any time we do that, they just they just find an excuse not to use the information that we provide. I think. If we used collaborative research with the fishermen and the scientists, I think we'd get twice as far. Um, a lot of times, a lot of these areas that are closed off, you know, just because it says it on some piece of paper that there's nothing there is ridiculous. They need to use the fishermen, let the fishermen help the scientists gather this data, and then come to an agreement. It's ridiculous the way they've been going about it. And uh, I don't think we can uh, afford to go this route anymore. Better science is always going to be uh, the key. Collaborative science, better science, getting better numbers, learning how these fish interact with each other. With each other. So, so you have to have, again, some cooperation, a partnership, a true openness regarding, uh, regarding the information, uh, and, and never discount the human element, which means uh, the captains and the crews who make observations, understand what's going on uh, well before uh, the scientific data is analyzed and, and come up with a, a plan here that will regulate in a way that uh, preserves an industry. This is the 50 pounds of fluke we're allowed to keep for the day. After the first tow this morning you saw we had that nice clean tow and we ran a good thousand eleven hundred dollars worth of fish overboard. Then we spent the next two hours or the next two tows I should say each tow was an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes towing a small twine to catch 250 pounds of squid, uh, 550, 600 pounds of butterfish, and a total whiting. Now, we ran over more dollar value in fish the first tow this morning than we spent the next four hours of towing the net on bottom and probably uh, six hours of picking. You know, we got less money doing that than what we caught the first tow and could have came in and not burned any fuel, but. That's supposed to be conservation according to the National Marine Fisheries Service and it's just doesn't make any sense and it's an awful lot of work and it's awful wasteful for what we could have been doing. We could have come in with 400 pounds of fluke and had a nice day's pay. You know, a fish that's had a record biomass, but yet instead we got to work on all this other stuff and kill a bunch of, a bunch of fish for nothing. It just doesn't make any sense.
They should look at what they've done and the stock rebounds that have occurred and pat themselves on the back and the fishermen on the back and say, geez, we're, we're, we're getting this done together. Instead, they're continuing to cut us back even though we know we got pop, you know, populations are increasing. You know, it's like there are successes. We should really be taking advantage of it. You know, and you know, the striped bass is a classic example. They really were down to nothing. And now there's, <laughs> Now the ocean's rotten with them, and we, thanks to George, we can't even have any of those anymore. So it's like, you know, can't land striped bass anymore. And that's just, it's a crime. It's, that's the kind of stuff that, that really is disheartening, is when they're, what they're doing against us rather than with us. Is there anything wrong with that? Nothing, except your idea that you'll never need science to keep house. It's the science being generated here in New England that is driving everything that we're doing. This is not about the scientists. They're top-notch people. They're world-class stock assessment people. Put them up against anybody, anywhere. But the net that they're using to do the survey that's 45 years old, that they hold to the highest standards you could possibly hold because it has a time series, is a totally ineffective tool for doing a survey. It has now been asked to do tenfold what it was initially designed to do, and it is totally inconsistent. And that is the worst thing you can have with a survey tool. So no matter how good the, the, the scientists are, it's garbage in, garbage out. It's, you know, it all falls back on that bad science. And no matter what we say, if we think the population is here, someone's gonna try to tell us it's lower than that. And it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. We need better science. And that's why, you know, minds need to get together to deal with this issue in a way that's uh, a productive, for the, the health of the species, for the industry, and for what managers are looking for as far as, uh, you know, targeting certain species, but also dealing with this in a way that could sustain uh, fisheries, uh, sustain fishermen during these tough times. We all abide by the regulations. We have the strictest regulations in the world. We've been told that we've, uh, we will be rewarded when these fish come back. In many cases, the fish are back, and we're still wondering how we're going to survive. If this is my reward for all the uh, for all the sacrifices that have been made over the years, uh, I guess uh, the handwriting's on the wall because I won't be doing it. It's over.